Jake Paul, Merch Lincoln Bile. I have had one-sided beef with a show that has been discontinued for about a decade now, but I cannot let this slide even to this day. My hatred for this is still plowing on strong. They have to pay for their crimes. If the justice system won't handle it, then I guess I have to take matters into my own hands, right? <laughs> Call me world star, the vigilante. By day, I make content, I guess, I don't know. But by night, I am out in the streets fighting crime. And this one is the biggest crime against humanity. The problem solvers. <laughs> the problem solvers. The problem solvers. The problem solvers is the worst show that Cartoon Network has ever aired. And I'm gonna stand on that hill. I'm gonna die on that hill proudly. Stand for what I believe in. God bless America. Truthfully, I could end the video right there and call it a day because uh, why do I need to explain myself, right? I said what I said and that's that on that. I won't do that. It's very tempting, but I guess I should elaborate, explain my answer like this is math class or something show your work. For context, I've always disliked this show, so it's not like I'm getting on the internet at my big old age just to shit talk a random children's television show from the early 2000s. This is personal, <laughs> okay? Uh, the Problem Solvers was an American animated series that aired for two seasons from 2011 to 2013. I would have been nine years old when it first premiered. I remember watching some of this show when it first aired and I, I felt disgusted, to say the least. I did not like the show at all. Not then, and definitely not now. I didn't have strong enough opinions about it to the extent that I can recall my exact feelings while watching the show, but I do remember not liking it or being very eager when it was airing on television. It just seemed like a waste of my time, personally. And, you know, that's me at nine years old. Can you imagine a nine-year-old complaining about their time being wasted? At that age, you're nothing but time. You don't got a job. You don't got to worry about bills, you know, like you're nine. <laughs> the Problem Solvers as a show really just came at a very vulnerable time for Cartoon Network because the year prior was messy, messy boots, babe. Like remember seeing real? You know, that was Cartoon Network's miserable attempts to incorporate live action reality shows on their channel, even though they have clearly branded themselves as the Cartoon Network. <laughs> You, you, the place where you go to watch cartoons? Like it was false advertising, babe, at that point. Shows like Destroy, Build, Destroy, and Dude, What Would Happen were airing on the channel. And you know, th th those were basically Mr. Beast videos before Mr. Beast was a thing. I digress, I won't go into detail, but yeah, it was, it was bad. Not awful, but it was bad. The only live action show I think I enjoyed from Cartoon Network was Hole in the Wall, if anybody remembers that. That was entertaining, mostly because I thought that I could do that. You know, it's kind of like watching Wiped Out. Is that what it was called? Wiped Out? Wipe Out. It's kind of like watching Wipe Out or American Ninja Warrior and you're just seeing people go through the obstacles and failing miserably. It's like, girl, I could do that. I can make a whole separate video about CN Rail and like what the hell that was supposed to be, but no, I digress. Let's go back to the problem solvers. So like I said, I have a personal vendetta against the show that needs to be resolved immediately. My issues with this show are longer than a CVS receipt and I will not be holding back any of my criticism. So if this is your favorite show for whatever goddamn reason. Then you must have been four years old when it aired and you were too stupid to know what the hell was going on. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Well, that was kind of harsh. You're kind of being mean right now. You know what else was harsh? You know what else is mean to not just my soul, but to my retinas? The saturation of the entire show. Let's talk about it. For starters, the entire show itself, ugly as fuck. The characters are ugly. The vibes were ugly. It was all ugly. I'm sorry to the artists who were responsible for whatever that was supposed to be, but your art sucks. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm sorry. I couldn't even say that with a straight face. I'm sorry. That was mean. That was really, really mean. Yeah, the colors, they were just so visually jarring. You cannot stare at your screen for too long because I feel like if you look away, you can still see the episode like in your vision. You know, like kind of how you stare at a light for too long and then you can kind of like, you see the you know what I'm talking about, right? The colors were just way too bright. It was way too visually jarring for the eye. And the scenes themselves, they were so cluttered that it, it, it looked like a unicorn had diarrhea and took it out on the show. Like there are ways to do cluttered backgrounds in a controlled way 
that makes it seem charming. Look at Adventure Time, for example. I love bringing up the backgrounds of Adventure Time. My wallpaper for my PC is one of the many backgrounds of Adventure Time. I love it. Ghost Shrimp on Instagram, they are the mastermind behind all of the backgrounds in Adventure Time. And the level of detail within the snapshot are insane. Like seriously, go check them out. I'm going to show you some of them, but like you have to go check out their work. I love their art so much. It's so good. The personality and the lore that's embedded in the art makes the show feel like it was made with love. Grandma's warm wrinkly fingers are just wrapped around you telling you it's gonna be okay baby here have a cupcake go watch adventure time you're gonna feel so cozy like it's such a good show um it also helps that the colors in adventure time don't make me want to drive my car off of the golden gate bridge if i were accosted by them in the wild so you know they, they have that going for them as well with the problem solvers it seems like they just threw a bunch of random shit back there for the sake of filling up the space and it just it looks so trippy it looks like a bad acid trip or something like i don't i don't even know man like there's just so much going on you don't even know what you're supposed to really be focusing on truthfully because there's just a lot going on the backgrounds themselves in the problem solvers does not blend well with the characters and it just it seems like the characters you know the focal point of the entire scene it looks like they're just one of the many random objects that are in the background and you just what where am I supposed to be looking right now? I hear somebody talking, but where are my eyes supposed to be right now? The designs, they're, they're ugly. I'm sorry. And for the love of Christmas music, the colors induce migraines. So harsh. Like my head hurts just thinking about it. Bright colors, they can be done in a tasteful way. I'm not against having a super rainbow, just whatever. I'm not against bright colors. I'm really not. Because look at Smiling Friends on HBO Max, or I guess it's just Max now. Nobody's going to call you that on HBO Max. That show is very vibrant to me, I think, but it, it's not annoying about it. Like, look at this rainbow ensemble. Look, they're just a bunch of little guys. What are they going to get themselves into? I guess you're going to have to watch the show to find out. We're season two of Smiling Friends. I need I need that in my lap by last week where where season two see me after class we're gonna have to talk about that the problem solvers plot pacing could also be a bit odd sometimes i think like i'm not really big on like critiquing narratives and stuff like that simply because i am the type to consume any type of garbage that i can get my grimy little hands on like i'll read the most filthy nasty just downright awful books just for the sake of reading them it's just like I'm not picky. This is coming from somebody who is not that judgmental, but it's just the pacing of the plot sometimes can just be horrible in the problem solvers. Some episodes were better than others, but I remember specifically while I was watching the very first episode of the first season of the problem solvers, I remember like that pissed me off simply because I did not enjoy the story itself and how the story was told. It was kind of jumping all over the place. It just didn't really seem very seamless. I just did, it was, I mean, you could figure out what was going on. Like you knew what was happening. It wasn't like it was confusing, but it just didn't feel natural. It kind of felt like they were just making shit up on the fly. I know that this show is supposed to be bizarre. Like it's not your average children's show, right? It's supposed to stand out in a way, but like this was bizarre in a bad way. You thought you ate, but the, the plate is still full. The meal is untouched. But do not get me started with the characters themselves. Christ, man. They're probably the worst part. I'm gonna be honest. The three main characters, what was it, like the the, the the average Minecraft streamer, the Tin Man, and the talking coffee bean from that one episode of regular show, they're supposed to be the main characters and they are boring. And when they're not boring, they're annoying the hell out of me. <laughs> well, I mean, that that's mainly the talking coffee bean guy, that giant talking turd. No. Mm-mm. Mm -mm, get rid of it now. At least the other two characters are definitely boring. When they're speaking to each other, it feels very rehearsed and it feels like I'm listening to the same conversation on loop. The Minecraft streamer, for example, will present a topic to the group for whatever reason, because of the problem solvers, usually it's a problem that they need to solve, right? So the Minecraft streamer will present a problem. The Tin Man will say something awkward 
or scientific about the problem or whatever. The Tin Man is a very specific trope. It's supposed to be the nerd, the brains behind the operation, but also just like socially awkward. The Tin Man will say something weird. And then the coffee bean will say something stupid or respond with an irrelevant statement altogether that really just, it, it has nothing to do with what's going on. Like they'll complain about how hungry they are and that they want pizza or that they're bored. And it's like, have we considered euthanizing? option have we considered the other option that maybe just maybe we we don't have to have him there but yeah that's basically 80 percent of the banter throughout the entire show and it's aggravating it's sad when the reoccurring side characters have more charisma than the main ensemble i liked this talking pinata thing that they had in like one of the episodes because he actually has some interesting dialogue with the main characters what's going on who are you guys i don't care this is my worst nightmare Hmm. You, I like. You, whatever. You, you ugly. And by interesting dialogue, I, I mean like he was roasting the Tin Man pretty much the entire time. It was funny. I'm sorry. And then sometimes uh, the, the coffee bean will tag team the pinata and you know that was probably one of the only times that i was not annoyed with their existence so kudos to the pinata or it was, it was like a, a, a robot thing I, I generally don't i don't know i don't remember i've repressed a lot of the memories of this show because i just it was traumatic <laughs> bottom line the dialogue falls flat most of the time so it wouldn't be a good show even if like all of the other problems that i presented were fixed like if the saturation was dialed back and like the characters actually look somewhat appealing like that doesn't even matter because at the end of the day the stories that they're trying to tell you i mean some of them had interesting premises but i feel like the execution was just boring like the banter between the main characters it just doesn't feel natural it just feels really repetitive it's just it's annoying i'm annoyed ow i sprained my thumbs the controller's not designed for you nor your massive thumbs alfay well, I can't play it. I'm already addicted to water, oxygen, social interaction. I don't need a new addiction. No problem. I'll do it. You know what's really interesting about this show, though, that I kind of didn't mention at the beginning of the video for a reason? Apparently, according to sources on the internet, this show, The Problem Solvers, was pitched to be an adult swim show. But apparently, like, the adult swim gods or whoever's in charge over there, they thought that the show was too cute. Did we watch the same show? I mean, maybe that talking dog with the monocle was a little cute. I mean, I kind of liked him. The person who voices the, the talking dog also voices Jake in Adventure Time. What's the same? Like John DiMaggio? 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 He's cool. I like him. It's a shame that he's he was a part of this. Yeah, you have to be absolutely delusional to think that there's anything cute about the other characters. Aqua Teen Hunger Force characters are more cute than the characters in this show. The humans look like walking flesh monsters and their lips give off major big mouth energy, which uh, is also not appreciated. I'd also like to take the time to admit something to you guys. For this video, I genuinely tried my diddly darn hardest to watch at least the first season of The Problem Solvers. I think there's like 20 something episodes in the first season, if I remember correctly. Or is there only 18? I can't remember. But it doesn't matter because I only ended up watching the first five episodes. After that point, I physically just could not handle any more of like, it was bad. I was not entertained in the slightest. I, I, I genuinely tried to give it my undivided attention, but I caught myself looking at emails and scrolling through TikTok every two minutes. Mind you, it's an 11 minute show, right? Each episode, is, like I genuinely thought it would be kind of easy for me to breeze through the episodes because they're only 11 minutes long, but after five 11 minute episodes, so that was enough. I had to stop watching it and I've honestly been putting off making this video. Like this video could have been made weeks ago genuinely because that's when I started writing it and doing all this. Sh but I, it was so bad. Like I physically could not finish the show. But if you found enjoyment in this garbage, then fine. But don't start whining to me about how good it is. Don't start anything i'm not listening la 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 i can't hear you this is like one of those video topics where you know usually i'm pretty open i like having discussions with people and seeing other people's point of views not with this though if i see a problem solvers defender in the comments i'm just i'm gonna laugh at you because i've had this conversation before this is not the first time that i've brought up the problem solvers on and my platforms really i have this conversation probably like once a month on twitch.com slash worldstar with two r's not by choice oh what's that the problem solvers yeah 
No, that is a seizure inducing show. That's enough of that. <laughs> that ain't SpongeBob. SpongeBob is square. I'm ready. I'm ready. No, you ain't. It always ends with somebody who's a freshman in high school who is yelling at me about how they really like the show and that I just didn't get it or something. And I'm just like, no, you didn't get it. You didn't know what quality control was back then. And so you had like this Stockholm syndrome thing going on up here in your noggin. And you convinced yourself that you like the show when in actuality, it's not good. There are people on Twitter right now who are complaining about how bad Craig of the Creek is. And I bet those same people would defend the problem solvers. Craig of the Creek, that's a good show. The problem solvers? Oh my god, send the flood. Seriously, y'all, don't let the nostalgia fool you, okay? Like I said, I was nine. I was a child when this show came out, but I wasn't an idiot. I had eyes, and I could somewhat see, because it was so visibly jarring, I could somewhat see what was going on, and it was just it was atrocious there was too much going on and it it was bad guys it it was a bad show i'm sorry i hate to be the bearer of bad news but it just was not a good show too i would actually like to formally apologize to the creator of the show what's his name ben jones i would like to apologize to ben jones right now i've been shit talking your baby this entire time and i'm sorry but your baby deserves to be curb stomped you really tried your hardest you did your best and you know what because of that i'm proud of you but also you should probably put an episode epilepsy warning at the beginning of every single episode because I swear to god somebody's gonna have a seizure while watching that but anyway thanks for watching this video hopefully you could see what I see when I watch this show because I'm telling you guys it's not good but thanks for watching the video hope you enjoyed it if you like the video like the video like the person subscribe to the video subscribe to the person do whatever you want I don't care socials are down in the description merch is done in the description everything you know and love is done in the description thanks for hanging with me don't watch the rom solvers it sucks go watch adventure time it's so much better or smiling friends that one's that was really good watch craig of the creek not enough people are watching craig of the creek i saw a tweet the other day talking about how anyone and everybody is represented in craig of the creek people with disabilities just different ethnicities people of different religions you have to be insane to not like craig of the Okay, I'm sorry. I'm out. Um, you can go now. <laughs>